Immunotherapy, as you know, is so different from chemotherapy, uh, very different toxicities. And while they're uncommon generally, they can be life-threatening. So it's really important for nurses to understand, number one, why the patients are having these toxicities and how they differ from chemotherapy. It's important for nurses to tell patients this is what you might expect. While uncommon, you need to call us right away because these can be life-threatening if they progress. Three of the most common um, immune-mediated toxicities from the immunotherapies that we use in lung cancer would be pneumonitis, colitis, and a rash or dermatitis. Um, again, they can be severe. The pneumonitis is, and colitis are the two that can be life-threatening and very concerning if they progress. So we tell patients that if you develop shortness of breath, trouble breathing, and it's difficult because they have lung cancer, so they may already have some trouble breathing. The point is that if it becomes a sudden increase in shortness of breath or a sudden increase in chest tightness or coughing, it's important to call the nurse right away. I've experienced this in my own clinic. It is reversible with high doses of steroids followed by about a month's worth of a taper. So that's for the pneumonitis. Again, can be life-threatening, very important that patients understand that. Um, the colitis is another one. This is uh, not to be confused with diarrhea. So diarrhea is loose uh, stools that are more frequent as opposed to colitis is um, abdominal pain, cramping with bloody or mucousy stools. So important to note the difference for both patients and nurses. Um, but if this develops, it can rapidly become worse. Patients may need hospitalized. Again, the treatment is high dose steroids. This is less common than the pneumonitis in lung cancer patients. However, the colitis is more common in melanoma patients. So if you're used to using these drugs in melanoma, you may think the colitis is more of a concern, but in the lung cancer patients, we have seen the pneumonitis be more of a concern. Now, the rash and dermatitis is not necessarily life-threatening, exactly, but it can become a severe rash all over the body, or it can be, just be a very minor itchy rash that patients can deal with. Again, you need to take pictures of it, evaluate it, maybe even biopsy the skin lesions. This tends to also be rare with the lung cancer drugs, but more common and severe with the melanoma combinations of ipilimumab and nivolumab. So we take that with a grain of salt. So another common toxicity would be endocrinopathies. And this is a wide range of different toxicities. This is probably the most common thing, um, patients becoming hypothyroid. So this is a lab value. They don't come to the office and say, hey, nurse, I feel like I have hypothyroid. It's a lab value. But when we see that their TSH levels are going up, 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 that means that their thyroid function is low, low, low. So we need to supplement them, usually with levothyroxine is the treatment of choice, and that's pretty easily managed. The difference, I think, with the thyroid issues is that that can become a grade two, grade three based on the numbers, but you don't necessarily have to hold drug or discontinue it permanently, like you may have to with the pneumonitis or the colitis. Um, hyperthyroid, the opposite, is less common, a little bit more difficult to treat, but there are some treatments. And then there's something called hypophysitis, which is a pituitary or adrenal disorder that can happen. Again, really rare, but if they happen, you would detect them on laboratory values um, and you would treat them accordingly with hormones or cortisol therapies. There's a lot of other rare, rare things, some ocular toxicities, some neuromuscular toxicities, um, but they're generally pretty rare. And then you have your hepatitis and nephritis. Those are the last two um, that are slightly more common, but again, paper toxicity is not something that patients feel. Um, we would see it on laboratory value and then we would manage it. If the hepatitis can become severe, you may need immunosuppressants in addition to the steroids, but really rare.